Lake Anjakuni in northern Canada is a rather inhospitable place. The lake, which is covered in snow and ice half the year, is part of a waterway that local Inuit used to maintain their communities through fishing and trade. There were several settlements along the shores of the lake, which were the homes of the Inuit. Over time, some of these developed from simple tent camps into larger colonies, and trappers who ventured far north to hunt beaver and reindeer were fond of visiting these small villages in search of a resting place. But nearly 100 years ago, something happened to one village that remains a mystery to this day. As there are many contradictions in the story, it should be treated with caution. I will come to these later. I'll get started right away. But first I ask you, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel at the end. Thanks. Kivalik Region, Nunavut, Canada, Lake Anjakuni, November 1930. On a cold November day in 1930, Canadian trapper Joe LaBelle was traveling near Lake Anjakuni in northwestern Canada in present-day Nunavut. He knew the area and the Eskimos who lived here well, and also their legends about the harmful forest spirits, the Wendigos. Knowing that these Inuit tribes were friendly and hospitable, welcoming travelers and offering them accommodation, he thought he would spend the night in one of these villages. According to him, as he approached the settlement, he was gripped by an inexplicable anxiety. This feeling only grew stronger when he saw the village with his own eyes. He noticed immediately that there was no smoke rising from the chimneys of any of the huts, and that the husky dogs, which always barked loudly to signal the arrival of a traveler, were silent. When he arrived in the settlement, he was greeted by an eerie silence. He could hear no sound of conversation or laughter emanating from the huts. He knew that all the inhabitants of a village like this would never leave the huts, and now he could not find a single soul. The village was completely deserted and desolate. As he wandered around the huts, he encountered more and more inexplicable oddities, and his earlier anxiety slowly turned to bewilderment and dismay. Since he found everything in the huts as if the Eskimos had left all at once, leaving everything they had been doing behind. On the tables were traces of meals that had been started but never finished. In some plates he found half-eaten, cold food, and in others he discovered burnt meat, confirming his suspicion that the inhabitants had left the village suddenly. In another house he discovered traces of cooled embers in the fireplace and a dropped seal skin that was being repaired, but the owner never managed to finish the repair. In other houses he found unfinished shirts with the needles still in them. He also found an excavated grave on the outskirts of the settlement with the body missing, but the stones at the edge of the grave were not broken up ruling out the possibility that an animal had scraped the body. LaBelle found no signs of violence in any of the buildings, no signs of a struggle at all. All the inhabitants' furnishings were exactly where they had last used them, including the weapons they had used for hunting and the food they would certainly not have left behind if they had left of their own accord. To the man, it seemed as if all of the village's nearly 30 inhabitants, including women and children, disappeared literally from one moment to he next. And his most shocking discovery was when he realized why the huskies were silent as he approached the village. The dogs were still leashed, but all seven of the unfortunate animals were dead, and only later investigations determined that they had simply starved to death. These dogs were vital to the life of an Eskimo community, and it was simply unthinkable that they would be left behind, hungry and thirsty. LaBelle left the village and drove to the nearest telegraph office a few miles away, where he reported his discovery to the Northwest Mounted Police, the RCMP. The official investigation found kayaks in the village, lapped by the waves on the shore of the lake, as well as everything else the trapper had previously observed. They also found that not one, but all the graves had been opened and emptied. The gravestones were neatly stacked in piles on either side of the graves, ruling out the possibility that animals could have been the culprits. The RCMP eventually concluded that the Inuit may have disappeared around eight weeks before LaBelle's arrival, but could not explain why all the residents had left the settlement, leaving the dogs without food and abandoning all their work. As if the story wasn't bizarre enough, 
While investigating the incident, RCMP investigators reported seeing mysterious pulsating lights in the sky above Lake Anjikuni that did not match the fascinating phenomenon of the Aurora Borealis. These lights were bluish and pulsating light phenomena observed on the horizon, but no explanation was ever given as to what they could be. During the investigations, another trapper was interviewed who reported seeing a huge luminous flying object that changed shape from a cylinder to a ball, heading towards the missing Eskimo camp at the time. In 1930, the concept of UFO, or UAP as it is called now, did not exist, but with the proliferation of UFO sightings, many believed the disappearance of the Inuit to be an early UFO abduction. They believed that the villagers were unwitting participants in an extraterrestrial experiment. They were taken away and never brought back, which is why they were never found. Conspiracy theories have also arisen that all the Inuit have been transported to another dimension or to a parallel world. The more outrageous ones even claimed that the inhabitants had been dropped into the past or the future. Of course, the only basis for these claims is that the inhabitants never emerged in the end and the more skeptical believe that the story itself is fiction. The earliest recorded publication of the Lake Anjikuni incident was a the 27th of November 1930 newspaper article by Emmett E. Kelleher in the Bee of Danville, Virginia. Brian Dunning of the Skeptoid website researched the disappearance of the Inuit and went all the way back to the original newspaper article. He pointed out various discrepancies in the original story, such as the fact that the kayaks could not have been lapped by the waves as the original report stated, as the lake must have been frozen at the time. Kelleher, the journalist who published the story, has previously been accused of exaggerating in his writings, and one of the photos used in his article has been proven to be at least 10 years old. Dunning also pointed out that subsequent reports have always increased the alleged population of the village, but have also exaggerated other details. Such details included, for example, the book The World's Greatest UFO Mysteries by Nigel Blundell and Roger Bohr, which describes three trappers who saw a UFO near the village, and gross exaggerations such as at least a thousand people disappearing without a trace at the time, and the disappearance of bodies from all the graves in an entire cemetery. Dunning pointed out that there is no physical evidence of the village at Lake Anjikuni, nor is there any record of anyone removing the remains of the village. Others have pointed out that although Joe LaBelle claimed to be an experienced trapper who knew the area and its people well, there are records that he did not have a hunting license before 1930. This does not mean, of course, that the lack of this prevented him from knowing the area or the village, as there were plenty of illegal poachers and trappers trading between villages at the time. The only thing that is certain from the story is that LaBelle, the trapper, did exist, but it has never been proven that he ever stumbled upon an abandoned settlement. But the fact that his person is connected with the mystery at all suggests that there must be some connection. There is also only circumstantial evidence, or a complete lack of evidence, that the whole story is a fabrication, but the investigating authorities were no doubt happy to accept this assumption which allowed them to close the investigation quickly. Regardless of the vociferous arguments of skeptics and disbelievers, the mystery of the disappearance of the Anjikuni village has been a constant and unending source for those interested in mysteries ever since. So the question remains, is the whole story really fiction? Or does it have some basis in fact? Or did it really happen just as Joe LaBelle said? If so, where do you think an entire community disappeared without a trace from one moment to the next? Be sure to leave a comment below, check out my previous videos, or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, so you won't miss out on my upcoming videos. Thank you very much for your attention. See you in next video.